Today we celebrate as a church the Palm Sunday of the Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ. We celebrate that moment of entry into Jerusalem where Jesus arrives as not a warrior king, but as a conquering king, one who brings the fullness of the peace of God, representing it by the donkey on which he rode, and by all the rich symbolism around that journey. We also just read the horrific telling of torture and pain, and how Jesus was fully committed in his love for his father, so fully committed that he would journey the road of suffering and death, that we might have life. So fully committed in his love for his father that his love could be nothing but complete. And the focus of that love giving rise to so much hate and animosity, so much brokenness and pain, tribal divisions, nationalism, all sorts of things that people use to replace that which is most fully important. Today, as we heard the story, you might have thought at several different times, who am I in the stories that we've heard? Where do I find my place? Am I in the crowd? Am I one of those people who, when I saw the exciting things Jesus did and heard his great words, was I one of the ones cheering in the street? Hosanna! Did I see the king coming? Was I one of those members of the cheering crowd that became the jeering crowd that called for his crucifixion? having lost all my faith and turning instead to hate and destruction. When we heard the story, did I feel connected to Peter, who wanted so much to be a faithful follower, yet found himself, when put to the test, lying, and running away, weeping. Do I at times find myself in my life to be Judas, who turned my back on that which I believe, hopefully gaining the grace he did to realize what I have done? Where am I in all of this? Perhaps you see yourself and recognize yourself in the faithful women who stood at the foot of the cross, not understanding why the, the one they believed had come to bring salvation was lying dead on a cross, but nevertheless standing witness with him and to him. There are so many people in this complicated and long story Simon the Cyrene didn't even know Jesus, as so many people in this world don't, but who did what was asked of him and did the right thing. Perhaps we see ourselves there. The person we should focus on and we're intended to see is the one in the middle, the one who is mostly silent. Today, the crowd, you had almost more words than I did. But he stood there silent today because he stood in the presence of his heavenly Father, stood filled with the Holy Spirit, stood ready to stand silent and allow his life, his words, his ministry, and his mission to speak volumes. For he did not come to force anyone to believe anything, or to do anything. But if we see in this person, as those women at the foot of the cross, as Peter did in his ministry, 
both before and after his betrayal, if we see in this person of Jesus something that is attractive, something that is true, something that speaks volumes to our heart, something that we can enter into as we do each and every time we come to the Eucharist and say the words of the Eucharistic prayer and enter into not some repetition of this sacrifice we just read about, but we enter into the very saving death of Jesus Christ. If we can find ourselves there and put our trust in that, we can begin to see with the eyes of Christ, the one who stood there, stood there and watched these people filled with hate and anger and brokenness. And we, like him, we can love those people around us who may be the most difficult to love. We can be that voice of peace in a world of brokenness, not just a world internationally at war, but a world sometimes in our own homes. We can be the voice of love. We can be the act of love. We can be that reaching out with kindness to those people who are not kind to us. Because we believe in the one who came in peace and taught us love. We can, if we take up our crosses and follow Jesus, we can follow him through to the fullness of the res resurrection. And if we live even in glimpses of that resurrection each and every day of our lives, we bring the fullness of the hope of the resurrection into our world, into our family, into our communities. We become ever more fully the very act of love that brought us salvation, the very act of love which is peace.